The following stream contains mature content and subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> oh, and there we go. Look, we're right dropped into it as we're laughing yes! and carrying the fuck on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm laughing at all these ratings mainly, I'm getting in Twitch chat. <laughs> mainly because I forgot to put the, uh, the I had intro? to rebuild the, uh, the whole OBS layout. I didn't have our intro in here, so we couldn't go to our intro. <laughs> So guess what? Hey, we're, we're winging it, it today, y'all. Fuck it. We're doing it live. It's just, <laughs> welcome to Windy City Live. Uh, of course, good evening. Welcome to Windy City After Dark. I am the storyteller and uh, general malcontent. And once in a while, I'll fuck up Shanky McStabber. <laughs> and I am Mama McStabber in Twitch chat. You can find me on socials at Dare, right there in the top left corner of my little window. Um, and I play Jacqueline Durand, also known as Jackie, to her friends and Jacks to certain individuals. Um, the Ventru of the Coterie. Hi, I'm Mischievous Red, and I play Isabella Caputo of Clan Chorator. Hello, uh, I am the Ivy Raven, and I play Genevieve Schutz of Clan Gangrel. I am Brad, uh, always a fuck up, uh, Timber Brad 411 in chat and Twitter. And uh, I play Nicholas Bowens of Clan Hikata and Pusher of Buttons, all things red. And I'm Gavin. I play the Marquette of Clan La Sombra, even if I'm not here. Oh, that's the thing about uh, La Sombra. You can't tell if they're here or not. Do you need to get fired for green backgrounds? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I am, uh, wow, this is a fucking day for me, isn't it, everybody? Uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is great. I'm going to fix that right now. Can't wait till we get the spinoff show, Windy City Wives. You know what? I would play in Let that. Let me fix our background. I would play quick, in everybody. that. Um, we'll turn this on, and then we're going to go up here, and we're going to fix these. Because, yeah, you're right. I kind of should have... Uh, our green screen and thanks for telling me because I didn't even notice. Uh, this is what happens when I run a stream when I've been sick lately. Um, bad shit happens, people. <laughs> Just so you know. I love that man. Yeah, <laughs> she has to. She don't get much choice, unfortunately. <laughs> no, I have all the choice in the world. I <laughs> no, choose too to. Late. <laughs> Let me go and do this way. Cop he cop cracks me It's up. better that she chooses to. <laughs> Wow, I don't even want to know how that's happening. Hey, welcome. I'm your new storyteller. Uh, You're all fucked. We are all fucked. (laughs) This is the weirdest damn layout, and I'm not sure why we're doing it, but we're going to fix it. So give me one second. I'm fixing it (laughs) while we uh, deal with shit. Uh, This is what happens when Shanky decides uh, to try and fix things, and it's on the fly. (laughs) Yeah, well, you know, this is what happens when I've been sick. And I do weird shit and I can't think straight because I should have had this prepped yesterday. But, you know, it, it is what it is. So here we go. Um, Mama's got one. Oh, I know what Mama's problem is. Hang on, I just, there we go. There we go. There we go. Except we got two odd things in the top corner there, which I'm going to fix too in a second. So give me one second. We're going to fix that while uh, we talk about it. Because <laughs> um, this is just not the day. Oh, man, we should, like, restart the whole stream, everybody. Except no. the problem is, it's motherfucking live. It's live. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> since, 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 we're ha- since we're having technical issues, I have a question for Lamar real fast. Uh, how many motherfuckers could a Lamar chuck if a Lamar could chuck motherfuckers? I don't know. That did work better in my head. So it starts with the first motherfucker. He's going to take that motherfucker and hit that motherfucker with another motherfucker, which is going to go to the nth power of motherfuckers. And then we're going to take those motherfuckers and drop those motherfuckers off the motherfucking cliff, which will then make them multiply by the power of 10 for more motherfuckers. <laughs> look at that. We're actually starting yeah. to look like a professional stream again. <laughs> kind of. We're just pretending, y'all. It's motherfuckered squared. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of McStabber right there, people. That's all the McStabber you could ever need right there. Look at that. There we go. <laughs> now you're getting a, a front side view of how I build our layout. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's motherfucking overwhelming. <laughs> Now we're just going to add one more thing, and then I think we're good to go. Okay, we'll just ignore the tech 
weenie doing the tech weenie shit. And y'all, if you have questions for season seven, for any of the cast, make sure you use your channel points down below in chat. Um, they look like a little bubble to highlight your question. Yep, just like Timber Brad did. Um, that way I can see it because I am the moderator for this. I am not the tech weenie. That is my husband. I am the moderator. So I will try to do my job. <laughs> <laughs> I get upset, but I mean, it's valid right now. I just can't believe how much I fucked this all up today. It's so. all right. It shit happens. Um, so if you have questions, please post them in chat right now. We will answer them. Oh, whoa. That's a lot of Jenny. That's a lot, hey. but she hot though. You know what? You know what? She hot though. There you we gotta go. Give, you gotta give the fans what the fans want. That's right. All the Jenny, all the time. <laughs> oh, we'll so, some there. of them want more. Some of them want less. So, oh, there we go. God. Okay. I got, those, I got. I'm almost fixed. I, we're good. doing good. All right. So in season seven, y'all, a lot of shit happened. It was literally cult shit everywhere. Fucking sus ass shadow dancers everywhere. Fucking just insanity. Um, and then at the end, Lamar left. So sad. Seriously. I'm not joking. And broke all the hearts. Yep. Broke all the hearts. <laughs> Those cultists shitting everywhere. <laughs> Gotta house train them. <laughs> so I fixed it. We're good. Now good. we're good. Okay. Uh, the shanky responsible for uh, OBS has been fired. He's been sacked and replaced with a llama. <laughs> An alpaca. That way I can nope, cheer them and make the yarn. 21 Mexicans up with the llamas. <laughs> uh, for those who watched Monty Python Quest for the Holy Grail. Uh, okay. Now we're ready to do this. As Relin said, uh, Relin's going to be the moderator tonight, as always. Uh, my brain is fried, so I'm no good at that anyway. If you have questions, go ahead and ask them in chat. Highlight the message, and we will try to answer them. And uh, otherwise, we will just talk about our general feelings and ask each other questions and uh, go right around from there. So, uh, okay, while we're waiting for questions, I'm going to open up with mine right off. Uh, everyone's feelings about how season... Uh, Season seven win. Oh, I'm not I'll going start, first, please. Since everyone else is being quiet. Um, I thought it went well. I think that like overall it was kind of like it was an emotional season, I guess maybe is the best way to fr phrase it. At least at the very end. Um, like I feel like previous seasons were kind of like the coders being a badass, but like this season it's a lot of like emotional trauma from a lot of the characters being brought forward um and i think that like went right up until the end with like lamar leaving uh and like isabella dealing with finding a scalp in her office and like jackie about her son and then like all of it uh i think it was a very I, it was good it was a very emotional season not gonna argue that Definitely i, I agree emotional. with that I, I very much agree with that. Just in terms of everybody kind of got hit with a little something in different points of the season. Um, I know for sure. I was, I, I didn't think that Shanky could actually get me with anything. I'm like, all right, well, you know, if, if he manages something of like, all right, that'll be issue. But no, the, the, the bits with Lamar's wife after, after the visit to the madam that had, I, I was still thinking about that after the, recording was done and it was like wow okay um you got me you got me all right what's a season it happens and then you got me again at the end you know y'all got me again at the end so i was very uh i very much enjoyed just how the season went from start to finish and especially i really liked uh the stuff that roscoe had to deal with regarding sun chi because you know roscoe very much comes across as the very studious intellectual guy you don't see his feelings until you know victor victor the dictor shows up so and then well i would sort of piggyback off of that i think for me um you know for the the first couple of seasons nicholas being very much like 
emotionless, kind of cold. Um, and then actually seeing that he does still have those emotions, um, you know, with everything that's happened this season with his sister. Um, yeah, it's it's been a roller coaster. Uh, I thought it was good. I mean, I, I personally was not emotionally impacted as much as everybody else was. Uh, I more was trying to like not step on the landmines, which I was failing to do. Uh, there, the thing is, I was gonna say, the fact that everybody was treating, uh, not everybody, but it felt like I'm, I'm, I'm more concerned. My feeling of the season was, uh, I don't know what the fuck's gonna happen with the House of Little thing. And that's what Jenny's. That's what I thought about it over the entire season because get people kept going back and be like, "We're gonna get the drink. We're gonna get the drink." So I'm. I'm. That's my. That's how I felt at the end of the season. Uh, I was sad with the Lamar stuff, but like, he could always come back. So it wasn't as sad to me. So I, I'm still waiting to see if Shanky can like really get me. But I don't know. Uh, some cold, players I'm isolate well here, enough. So uh, just the some players can compartmentalize characters enough that you can't get them. I mean, it's. Their character may be upset, their character uh, may cry, but you can't get them uh, because some people just can do that. I can't, but some people can. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then finally for me, um, <clears throat> yeah, it was a very emotional season. Um, seeing everyone get pushed by something. Jenny got pushed by Loden fucking with her shit. You know, Isabella got pushed with fucking Amelia DiCarlo's bullshit. Nicholas got pushed with that same fucking bullshit. And, of course, the whole bullshit with Zal and her sire pushes him too. Lamar got pushed with his wife still loving him. Roscoe was Sun Chi. I mean, that's always going to be a, a sore spot for him. Always. Because he is very much one that believes in justice. And that's not just in his mind at all. Jackie, not just her son this season, having her coterie mates threatened, pushed her. Seeing her coterie mates struggling, pushed her. That is why she tried to calm Nick down. Because she didn't want him going off alone. And then, of course, she finally fang-banged a really nice guy, and then he had to leave. <laughs> There's a good seven seasons of uh, a build-up build with up that. Of sexual tension that just low-key... <laughs> Started off right in season one, just low key, he just <laughs> was there, and then bam, and then he's gone, just gone, and it's like okay, you know, okay. And we might have played <laughs> that part a little bit when we, we uh, when Lamar was when he said that he was leaving. Uh, we were trying to figure out how to end it, and it came up in our in a cast discussion about you know. Well, Let's give the viewers what they want. Give them what they want. And, <laughs> uh, that was not the purpose and why I introduced the vampire Molly, but. The players jumped on it and said, there we go. We can do that. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, no, it was a lot. I, emotionally, my character was very up and down this season because there was a lot of things kind of stressing her for real. I mean, you know, it, and at the same time, she has her own personal stress. So it, it's been a, a really challenging season for me as her player to portray her in these states of stress and even sometimes duress. Um, but it was a, definitely a fun season. It was a lot of good plot laid, and I really enjoyed it. So, all right. We do have some questions now. 
Vampire Brat asks this of Gavin. What have you learned as Lamar? Um, what have I, the player, learned? Um, I, there, there is a lot to unpack there. Um, being part of such a dynamic group, of, I mean, thinking on their feet. And, you know, we've, we, there have been some changes to the cast over time and learning how to, you know, kind of bring people in and make them uh, feel a part of the group has been great. I've, I've not seen that very much throughout my gaming career, so to speak. Um, because it always takes some warming up and then some people gel, some people never do, but I've not found that to be the case with this group. It's always been, we managed to get everybody in and working together. And soon it, it started just feeling like, oh, they've been here forever. And then I had to go, you know, I go, was going back and rewatch and stuff. I was like, oh yeah, we, we didn't actually start with like three of the people here, but you would not have known that if you had just you just come into the stream uh a random sunday and for all those you know actually gone through and watched from the beginning you'll, you'll know what i'm talking about as well um another thing creating actual plans and ha and carrying them out because i've played a lot of scattershot rp too we're like all right we say we're going to have a plan and about five seconds in everybody's you know doing their own thing for themselves but when the coder goes, all right, here's what we're doing. It's like, this is the first thing happens. Second thing happens. Oh no, something didn't go right. Let's, you know, let's readjust. And everybody being able to, like I said, to just kind of go and move on the fly. It's been a lot of fun, especially when, you know, oh shit, werewolf. Like, you know, most people, most people are like, uh, okay, I think the storyteller just killed us. And we're like, and all of us are just like, all right, so who's taking the first shot? Who's taking the second shot? So that, uh, those are kind of the really big things. Uh, also, I feel like my ability to kind of improv has really, has increased. Most of those one-liners that seem planned, but they were not planned. It was just like, oh, this is something Lamar would say. So... You have to be good at, you, you have to develop the improv skills when you're in a shanky game because you don't know what I'm throwing at you. Right. And all the players, uh, if you come into it with good improv, you're set. But if you don't, you'll learn it or, you know, something really bad will happen. One thing I will say about my husband as a storyteller, he rarely, rarely, like almost never throws an obstacle at a group that they can't overcome in some way. Sometimes the answer is the easy one, open fire. Sometimes you got to think it through. Sometimes the answer is run away. And sometimes the answer is run away and regroup and figure out how to attack it from a different angle. Uh, but my husband is very good about giving problems that can be solved. It's just a matter of figuring out which way to attack it. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm glad that you saw that, you know, having plans was was vital to solving his problems, because that is a big thing for a shanky problem is you got to come up with a plan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Maddox asks, which cult are we most concerned about? Uh, the cult of Mama McStabber. Yeah. I, I, I'm just joking. I, hashtag I am a cult leader. Um, but yeah. Um, <laughs> no. Um, I will say that the um, Ash Finders is very problematic. Very problematic because they are killing Kindred, ashing Kindred to make their drug. Um, that is a big time problem. Um, then... For me personally, I am very concerned about the Church of Set because they have an entire city under their control right now. And the uh, Keisha is branching out. And that is a problem. That is a problem. 
So it, it's not just her personal vendetta about Church of Set. There is some serious shit going on with the Church of Set in this area that she wants to solve because it is definitely all the red flags are waving. So that's my my take on cults. Yeah, I'd say that they're, and it may be just the access to the information that the Coterie has, they seem to be the most aggressively expanding, I'd say. They're the most upfront about it. And like I said, it could just be the information that the Coterie has since we do have like an end to Keisha. Uh, but they've been around for a while and we've seen their growth. Like the Ashfinders, like, yes, they're like killing Kindred, but at the same time, like, there's there's a lot less known about them. They seem smaller in the Church of Set right now, I'd say. And again, could just be appearances, but I think that's kind of where I stand on it. Uh, with the Church of Set, uh, they're normally known for being very subtle. Uh, when they're above board about their expansion, there's a reason. Uh, they feel confident. They feel confident. That they can be above board about it. And that... That should be, that is scary that you're like, wait, no, you're supposed to be sneaky about this shit. And you're like out there with it. Why are you thinking that's safe? Oh shit. Yeah, um, I don't. Oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Um, I don't know that there's any of the cults specifically that worry Nicholas any more than any of the others. Um, just because over like the last three seasons, all the time that he's been with the Coterie, like we've had like funky shit thrown at us. And I think Nicholas is definitely now of the mind that whatever is going to come to the group, um, somehow they'll figure a way to deal with it. So I don't know that he's necessarily immediately worried about any of that. Um, as for me as a player, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know that there's any that really, like, concern me. It's like, yeah, it sets, um you know, the, the upfront when they're normally sneaky thing. Okay. But you know, if you can see the snake, you know, I don't know. I, I, I would almost say, and it's going to sound really weird, especially given the predilection for, uh, for them that, uh, one of the players has, um, cult of Mithras actually kind of worries me as a player. That's good. It should. <laughs> because no cult is a good thing. Um, and Mithras kind of coming off as this justice sort of thing. It's like, it's if there's one thing life has taught me is it's really, really easy to justify something being, you know, vengeance and just. Um, so, yeah, I, I'd rather somebody be, like, in my face about being fucking, you know, like, you know what they are. It's like, whether or not you believe it, you know it. Whereas Mithras is very much the, they'll, they'll smile at your face while they stab you in the back. Um, yeah, that's what I'd say. Um, <clears throat> the Ash Finders are definitely a big concern. I would think both from a player and a character standpoint, because all it takes is one of them screwing up one of their kills to create a masquerade breach that, wouldn't you know it, probably winds up on the Coterie's desk anyway. And then they've got to deal with, they're going to have to deal with that. Now, Church of Lilith also, Lamar's like, Church of Lilith, he had one uh, experience with them a few seasons back, and he does not want that particular uh, brand of smoke, but he would also very much you know, he also very much believed that that's another group that has to be dealt with sooner rather than later because they're just, they're super dangerous and he doesn't want to get, you know, flayed just for being, you know, it's natural charm itself. Uh, 
my answer is probably uh, surprising for anyone who knows me. Uh, Jenny is worried about the Bahari. And not for the reason people probably think. It's because she doesn't know what the, the, the ask or the game or the deal is right now. So that is concerning to her. So for her, she is worried. From a player standpoint, for like the player, uh, yeah, the Ash Finders are a problem. The Cult of Set is a problem. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. The play, Jenny probably wasn't too happy about the deal the Mithras made with uh, uh, Airport Chick, but she's not going to say shit because it doesn't matter at the end of the day. Uh, so, yeah. I think you should be worried about all the cults. Every fucking one of them. Oh, yeah. Because they're all problematic. Because in each of their own way, they're dangerous in a different way. Even the cult of the tongue is dangerous in its own way. Uh, and each one can potentially destabilize things in Chicago in their own method. And each problem would have to be handled totally different, which, yes, you're probably right, Lamar. Uh, I didn't introduce cults to not put it on the, the coterie's plate because, well, uh, the story is about the coterie. If there's big events in the city, would you rather hear about it going on around you or would you rather your characters be part of it? That's the part of telling a story is to be right in the middle of it all. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's one thing that, you know, you should always be aware of as storyteller is uh, it's better for them to be part of the big stories. Don't let them watch it from the sidelines. Make them part of it. And if that means they get, you know, called by the prince to do stuff and called by Cedric to do stuff and Amelia comes to him, hey, so be it. That puts him as, the, you know, center of the story. Let's him do it. I'm just reading Zoom chat right now. And um, Gavin called Jackie that she really is aggressively French. That was hilarious. <laughs> Great quote from a previous season. Yeah, she really is aggressively French. <laughs> All right. So Astral asks, which of your list are you next planning to off and which are you most concerned about? From Jackie's perspective, um, new priority one is Amelia DiCarlo. She's a problem for multiple people in the fucking coterie. She wants to solve that problem. And now after taking a little sip sip from Lamar, she can help. She is going to be a tough one to kill. She is an elder Lasombra who has survived a very long time. And yeah, they get overconfident, but uh, once they hit a certain age, there's a reason they make it to that age and none of the younger Lasombra haven't eaten them yet. There's a certain level of competence you must have to make it, you know, three centuries in. Otherwise, you're bait. And far as most concerned about, that's going to be loading. Dude's crazy, but he's fucking brilliant. Yeah, I think next on the list for Isabella is probably actually just making sure that Keisha is taken care of. Like, we've done everything, but it's, like, making sure that that doesn't, that everything goes how it's supposed to go. Um, and so since we already have so many steps taken on that, making sure that one's seen through. Uh, I do think she thinks the biggest threat, though, is Amelia. Uh, I don't, Amelia doesn't quite make it to next on her list just because of just what uh, Janky was saying. There's, it'll be a bit of maneuvering to really figure out how to accomplish that. Because we don't really have a, a lot of information to go on. All we really know is what she wants us to know, which puts us in a bad position. I think for Nicholas, and it's going to sound weird, the order I would put them, I think Nicholas wants Amelia to be next. Um, because... I mean, she's responsible for Izzy's death. Whether or not she is next, that's that's where he's at. Um, so I would say at that point, the one he's most concerned about 
I don't know that he's because it's a very emotional situation for Nicholas. I don't know that he's thinking about her as logically as he probably should be. Um, so to him, the more logical part of his brain, as far as concern, would be Alessandro. Um, just because he's like finally kind of putting the pieces together that, you know, wraiths are being involved that may or may not be um you know breaking rules on their side of things to do what they've been doing um and so nick nicholas i think is just there there are too many unknowns with what's still going on with alessandro that he sees him as the bigger concern amelia probably should be but he's the one she he wants dead now Uh, Ginny really wants to say Loden because, uh, fuck that asshole. Um, but she understands after being with Isabella that Amelia DiCarlo is a bigger quote unquote threat, um, because she is obviously being provocative in a non like crazy way, if that makes sense. Loden was doing his provocative, being a provocateur in his weird, crazy thing he does. Whereas Amelia DiCarlo is basically saying, I'm declaring war on you and I'm going to, she's already said she's going to, you know, kill multiple people. She's going to make them suffer, et cetera, et cetera. She, she was openly declaring war. Loden was just being a dick. Mm -hmm. uh, and Genevieve understands that. Doesn't mean he's not still high on the list for Genevieve. She would love to touch the concrete behind his fucking back, uh, preferably from the front to back. But we'll see. So, you know, no, but Amelia is probably the number one threat for her now on the list that needs to go next. Uh, yeah. I do agree with you, though, uh, Red, that definitely follow through on Keisha because I've been pushing for that towards the end of season. I'm like, I want to see what happened to Keisha, you know, um, because, yeah, we need to find out if it actually went off without. As her. I've said, uh, as I said, when Roscoe Spirits touched it, it is not an instant thing. It takes time. Sometimes it takes years before they die. So uh, it's a long term to see whether she dies. The bigger question is. Uh, whether you see it on her finger or you see somebody else possessing it. Right. Uh, that will be the bigger question. That's the question. We need to make sure she has it. Because I do it, think it also becomes... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I thought you were done. Oh, that's okay. Please go ahead. Um, I think it's part of that making sure she has it. But if it does take additional time, we need to be mindful of that and do something if, for example, the cult takes actions because of her before the ring takes effect. Yes. Like, we need to be mindful of seeing how quickly it's working if yes. we can contingency plans yes. always important yeah. always important yeah absolutely gavin do you have any contribution towards who should be next for the coterie i know your character lamar has left for the time but who would lamar say is target number one now oh this is such a target rich environment and it is. <laughs> lamar lamar is kind of grousing because they've moved from the all right, we can walk out and go kill this guy right now and probably get away with it too. Everyone we have to deal with is older than us, has been, you know, is much more, is a little bit more crafty. And it's like, is, we'd like to blow up the building with them in it, but now we can't just do that without getting Jackson on our ass. So in order, he'd want to deal with uh, Amelia because his problems are, have been and always have been other fucking Lazabra. So removing her from the table, that's someone you got to get rid of right away. Loden is having, uh, you know, his sewer circle jerk and he can do that. You know, he can hang out with his buddies down in the sewer with his Burger King crown. He can hang out with Balthazar. If Balthazar is, you know, him and Balthazar are having movie nights. They can keep each other occupied while they get rid of uh, Amelia for off and Brayden, then uh, they then then they can deal with Loden. Balthazar is going to be a problem, but I also see Decker needing to be dealt with probably a little bit more directly. 
yes, that's going to cause issues for Milwaukee. But even when they get past Keisha, Decker is still a problem and he's still out there, you know, talking his trash and working with someone else behind the scenes to kind of destabilize Chicago. So it's like, we got to, we got to kind of deal with him before he decides to come at us for what we did. And even if we don't want to off him immediately, we probably at least need to get him on a leash since we do know that he's making weight. Oh yeah. Chicago, to, to exactly. Influence Chicago. Like at the very least we need to get a handle. You bring up a real good point though, Lamar about, you know, now you're having to deal with older, mm-hmm. more elder vampires. You all took out the low hanging fruit. Oh yeah. The easy ones. And as a storyteller, that was one of the first things I wanted to give y'all easy targets in the beginning. Uh, Build confidence. Well, not just for the built confidence, but to to show, you know, uh, the ones that are low on the totem pole, you can generally get away with, especially ones who aren't really well connected. Uh, You cut your teeth, so to say, on those. Mm -hmm. But once uh, they're gone, the only targets left are ones you've got to really uh, either plan or uh, plot a way to get away with it in some cases, or plot a way to even pull it off in others. And it shows the progression of the characters in the city at that point. And something else I think that we might want, this is the last thing I'll say on it, I think we might want to think about, as whenever, at least in my head, whenever we think about dealing with an enemy, it's always like offing them. Uh, I do think that we probably need to consider alternative methods of just getting them out of the city not necessarily offing them, especially as it comes to these older kindred. I don't know what that Or would basically be. having them by the balls. Yeah, like something. Leverage. I think that we'll need to expand our way of dealing with them as we. Yeah, I had originally planned for that to be uh, part of the Aluke storyline. Yeah, that was the plan. And then the players decided to subvert that. uh, And (laughs) And Molly wasn't supposed to be there. Well, the the (laughs) dice determined he was because she was a touchstone. There was a chance he would be there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, And (laughs) my dice uh, determined he was there. But there was actually supposed to be that to show that. Uh, I do plan, speaking on that, a little bit of a spoiler, I do plan to bring Nero back more into the story a bit, Mm -hmm. because uh, that's someone they can't directly just go kill. He's too protected. But they can complicate things for him (laughs) big time without... And Jackie's still got a mirror she needs to get in his possession somehow. He may be protected protected by Carfax, but that don't mean you can't fuck with his interest. That don't mean you can't fuck with him. Uh, It just means you can't kill him. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of things short of death you can do to a kindred. That is very unpleasant, but it's just part of the society. It's part of how what happens. So no, we are totally to thinking it. on the same lines, Red. We really are. I mean, like how Jenny handled Bobby was brilliant. Um, you know, it's not always destroy the enemy. It is sometimes have them by the balls, um, you know, and and basically own them in other ways. Um, yeah, it. it and we definitely need to explore some more of that. I know viewers get real excited when this coterie goes all ham and just, you know, eviscerates folks. But that's not always how Kindred do it. Um, so, yeah, especially Cam Kindred. There is a lot of maneuvering and manipulations involved in Kindred warfare. A lot of it. Um, so, yeah, no, I totally agree with you. Um, I think I think de- with the targets we have now, we're going to see more of that. We're going to see leveraging resources and connections to fuck with their interests. We're going to see a lot of stuff go down like that because it's now we are dealing with high profile targets, you know, and it's not as easy as just offing them now. Even someone like Baron Anita is not someone you can just right can't just off. offer. Mm -mm. Not without creating a huge ass incident. I mean, just like Jackie was like, "Okay, we are not going in after Baltazar in the pit because that's going to cause an incident. You know, (laughs) they may be anarchs, uh, but she's been in anarch and been in the area for a while. There are uh, implications to offing her due to her connections. And that's just a fact that even uh, Camarilla and anarch, they're supposedly opposed. But when you live in an area for long enough, your interests kind of merge it's like genghis he actually lives inside the loop for an anarch uh bruja that claims to fuck jackson uh, somehow he has a haven inside the loop oh he's a little rich boy yeah that should tell you something <laughs> about the interconnection sometimes that he is jackson still allows him to keep his haven inside the loop for all the trouble he causes it's because there's there's connections that uh come into play later 
All right. Anyone else have any comments? Nope. We good? All right. So, uh, Devilish Darkness asks, Windy City Anarchs, what do we have to do to make that happen? Uh, I will answer right out. I don't run Anarch games. Uh, my method of storytelling and my preferred method of storytelling and the way my brain works uh, really lends itself to Machiavelli and politic twists, uh, even on a street level game, as this coder has found out. It's street, it's started street level, but it's more and more as we progress because you can't, the camera really, you can't avoid politics. And since I'm good at it, that's what I stick with. You might see some anarch one shots, but that would be the extent of it. Now, that's not to say if there is a storyteller in the, uh, a McStabber storyteller that wanted to start up an Anarch kind of game. I mean, that's up to them. That, you know, it wouldn't be me running it though. Cause I'm Camarilla guy. Um, Vampire Brat asks, I, I had just happened to see this one. Please remember to use the channel points to highlight your questions because the questions that are not highlighted will blend in with Twitch, with other Twitch chat. So it's kind of hard to pick them out. But I did see this one. What is the name of the kindred that's been outcast? I don't know what she's talking about. Uh, I know you have the independent, the uh, Atukas. They're the ones who aren't a part of any factions. Uh there's no specific one that's been outcast, but you find a lot of times there's independence or there's some who oddly enough have quasi status in both. Yeah. Uh, she mean blood hunted potentially. Uh, blood hunted. Just blood hunted. Yeah. Blood hunted is an outcast. It's, uh, I mean, oh, yeah. unless she's talking about the one, my, my other character that was outcast from cam, that was Lily. Yeah. Hanger. You can get, uh, ex you can get, uh, exiled. From a cam city. Yeah, she was exiled from cam. Yeah. Um, because of her machinations. Yeah. Um, fucking descendant of Helena, of course. But but you know, <laughs> it, as as time is, I, I know we talk about the the factions: Camarilla, Sabat, Anarch. Uh, Sabat, not as much even now. But Camarilla and Anarch, the the lines blur. Especially in this place in the size of, of Chicago in the city with the politics of Chicago, the lines blur a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, Anita shows up at Elysia events in the city. Uh, she may be an anarch, but is she really not a hundred percent? Mal Davis is one of the few there that you might say is fully anarch in some she's ways. She's not. She's an she's anarchist. anarchist she's different. not allowed in Elysia. She can't got to be careful anywhere in the city. So uh, there's uh, gradations to who's an anarch and who's not. <laughs> okay, Astral. The one who Nicholas oh. is helping is what Vampire Brad elaborated. Oh, the one who Nicholas is helping. Uh, Nicholas isn't helping one. He uh, Zao. Uh, oh, Zao. Oh, no. Are you talking about the the lady in the the cemetery? Oh, Narissa. She's not an outcast. She is. No, it's Zal. Is she's she's kind of outcast, but not really. She's still a cam, but she's just kind of looked down upon. She's ostracized. She's None ostracized. Of, most of the kindred in the city won't even speak to her. Yeah. Which is yeah, an odd and, thing when you think about it because it's all. a concentrated effort by most of the kindred society to completely ignore her and not. That poor girl. Acknowledge her, which is a whole nother thing about. Uh, there's bound to be some that wouldn't give a shit that she supposedly killed her clan. But the fact that almost the entire city. That's some sus shit. Uh, there's something that makes it weird. Mm -hmm. You never get a whole city to go along with anything, mm -hmm. ever. Mm -mm. Okay, Astral asks, aside from Lamar leaving, which scenes were most emotionally challenging for character and player? Uh, we are talking this season. Um, Lamar is Lamar realizing, you know, finding out that his wife, you know, was still there, it, you know, given that, you know, maybe a season or so before she put him into the, into the lake where he, you know, he, and that led him, you know, to end up diabolizing someone, but, you know, he was pretty much done with her after that point. It was like, seriously, but then finding out that, you know, she still chose him and she still wanted to, you know, she still cared about him after that. I don't think Lamar was expecting that. I, I, he's more, he's a guy who's much more comfortable. You know, if you hate me, I hate you. And 
it's it's just easy to put someone in that box and leave it there. Huh? So he's he is definitely not okay. It's, it wasn't okay for him to be like for her to be like, yo, I still chose you, and he's like, I haven't. You know, I, I was very much prepared to just hate you for the rest of my existence, or not think about you, and now I gotta like feel things. I love bringing that on you. The fact that Lamar is her fetter. You're why she's stuck on this earth still. Uh, I loved doing that. I, it's one I'd planned for a while. I just hadn't. We hadn't had a good time in the story to reveal it, but the madam was a perfect chance. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wish it would have come up earlier, but there was no real way to work it. It would have been too jarring. It would have been obviously me planting that in there rather than letting it come naturally like I prefer to do. And yeah, the look on your face when I hit you with that, I was like, yeah, I think I, I just, I got him. Uh, so it wasn't necessarily emotional, but trying to convey the appropriate emotion, uh, the scene where Genevieve wakes up and is told your property has been firebombed or hit by Molotovs. I wanted to convey that like seething rage that was not being taken out on those around her, but still coming off as being like hella pissed off. Um, for a player standpoint, though, it's funny because probably the tougher scene to play out was the one with Isabella in the, in the season finale because I was trying to make sure that I was being like appropriately caring and stuff. And I immediately walked into it and walked on the landmine without even thinking. <laughs> so <laughs> made such a good scene. So, though. <laughs> so I immediately was just like, ah, fuck. Uh, I was trying to be so careful and I immediately had to start playing on the back foot. And yeah, so. I think and it wasn't, I guess the only scene that it really came up with, but it's also more of an undercurrent. Um, it was in the scene where Isabella was talking with Emilia in the shadows, uh, where she was having to confront the idea that she was someone's second choice. Uh, and that that's has like fundamentally changed. Like that someone's, Someone made such a big decision that impacted her life because she was someone like because the other person wasn't available. And the, I'm like, I think that's really messed with her. The funny part of that one is you suspected it was hinted before, but no one had ever told you to your face. Yeah, like she In guessed it. And like, I, I think she tries to probably like forget it a little bit. And then Amelia brought it back again. Um so yeah, I think that's probably like the most emotional for like Isabella. She threw it in your face like a gauntlet. Yeah. I mean, like it was a good one to throw. <laughs> for me, it was coterie meeting scene at Jackie's Cabaret. Having to discuss what the madam had told her about her son. That was hard both for the character and for the player. Because well, without going too far into it, I have dealt with loss a lot. And um Having my character think that she had lost her son, manipulated to think that she had lost her son. She'd been searching for a touchstone ever since and never finding one like him. And to have it, you know, have to be as forthcoming with her coterie. I mean, she she has a lot of trust in this coterie, but she really revealed a lot about herself in that scene, more than she had ever revealed to any of them. 
And that was really hard for her and for me as the player to convey because she's a very guarded woman. And it was rough. It was rough. And the tears and stuff were real. <laughs> uh, I would say for Nicholas, I mean, it's the easiest one. It is like as soon as he realized or, you know, was told that it was not his sister was murdered and not just an accident. Um, and then kind of going from cold emotionless to just anger. Um, because that's one thing like I've tried with Nicholas is like he's got a very dry sense of humor, very dry personality. And when when anything happens with his sister because they're twins, for him it's like it's happening. It it's it's actually and figuratively part of him that they're doing this to. Um and I mean, yeah, she's she's literally been with him since, you know, he was a mortal. So, yeah, just to to find out that I'll and then. Yeah, I like I would say the second half of the season has just been kind of emotional for Nicholas because it's just been like frenzy check after frenzy check just because it's just he's so emotionally raw. Um with everything that's going on, that it's kind of like throwing him off kilter. Um, yeah, I would say that. And uh, to be fair, some of those checks you've chosen to do. So, no, that's a sign of a good yourself. player. Uh, no, so, no, sign no, of a good player so, is when you realize no. your character has been in something that might frenzy him, and you taking uh, the you no, know no. thing to say, "I need to frenzy this." This I am one hundred percent busting Brad's balls because he's Mister like. Let me take a check on this. And then he's like, oh, thank fuck I passed that. It's like, no, 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 no. Uh, so the every frenzy check or whatever that I've the Nicholas has ever had to make or I've ever had to make because of the ring is a hundred percent on me. Uh like absolutely. That's all my my own shenanigans. Um, because fuck it, why not? Um, but like all of the Nicholas stuff, like specifically when Amelia comes up. Yeah, I'm making the choices to make those frenzy things, but I think it's just trying to get in the mindset of Nicholas in those instances. Like it's, she is very integral to his identity. And so, like, the death of your the sister that, yeah that shaped who nicholas is yeah i mean her killing isabella and finding out it wasn't because for those who don't understand when nicholas made his character uh when we did our session zero the unique session zero method check to youtube you'll see it uh, izzy's death was natural in his mind when he created his character nothing that's come up of isabella since then was part of his part of the plan so for him to find out for Nicholas to find out that Isabella's death was planned, it was a retaliation. Uh, that's also Brad finding it out. It's tough. I'll tell you what the hardest part for me this season, it, none of it was emotional. It's knowing that I've laid groundwork for certain story plans. And some of them I think are really good and I love it. And I love the twist coming. But I need to, uh, resisting the urge to push them and rush them and instead just letting them play out naturally, like I brought up with Lamar's wife. Um, I've been wanting to do that one for three seasons to hit him with that, that, that feelings. But you can't rush it. So you could have had the Jackie Lamar ship sail much sooner. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> 
you know, I don't want to rush it. But a lot of times I'm like, I, I want to give them like sperm certain directions to get into it. But I'm like, no, we got to let this play out. And if it doesn't play out, then it just doesn't happen because I like the natural feel of the game. The fact that the story being told is not mine. It's the players. What comes up a lot of times is the players. Now I'm the one who made Izzy's death what it is, but that is just taking the story that the players gave me and making it real because you can't know everything that went on until you find out. So that's the hardest part for me this whole season, especially this season. This season in particular has seen the laying of a lot of threads and a lot of cross threads and a lot of red herrings. Good, delicious plot. Yeah, red herrings that I'm looking at going, man, I'm, I'm loving and following the red herrings right now. It's but all good. I can't rush it. We'll follow it, and right, then we'll see exactly. it's a red herring and be like, okay, well, now we start over. Where do we go but from here? But even the red herrings <laughs> normally either lead to story or lace to the story somehow. You don't just put a red herring that goes to nothing and just, you know, is a brick wall. No, red herrings are other stories that just happen to coincide with the one you were looking into. You know, so, yeah, uh, that was that's been tough all season for me. Does anyone have anything else to add? Okay. All right. Astral does ask, which plot threads going forward are most exciting and troubling for each of us? Let's start with Shanky on this one. I want to know what he sees as our plots that are the most exciting or troubling. Amelia DiCarlo is going to be great. She's made a flat out statement. She is going. She's declared war. She is going to make Nicholas watch Isabella die in his arms as a reminder of his sister. That is a bold fucking statement to make. Mm -hmm. That takes brass balls the size of a, you know, minivan to say it, especially in a city like Chicago when you're not part of the city. Uh, but she's cagey. Uh, she told that for a reason. She doesn't share anything without a reason. She has a plan. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a story I'm really looking forward to. I'm looking forward to see how Jackie deals with her son. I am looking forward to the Bahari stuff because, yeah, there's a sell coming. This is a shanky game. Uh, for every upside, there's at least three downsides I'm attaching to it. That's just part of the world of darkness, baby. I love it. Uh, Nicholas, between the Amelia stuff and the Alessandro stuff with Zhao, um, that goes back to me not wanting to rush certain story threads because there's some Zal stuff that uh, the, only myself and Maddox, who plays Alessandro, know that no one else knows in this cast. And both of us agree we don't want to rush it, but it's some good, juicy shit coming. Um, Lamar, I, I'm sad to say we don't get to explore the, uh, the, the whole bloodline of the Shepherds. But I laid the, the groundwork for this season of them well, they're going to wander to the wrong part of the Undercity. And they're going to find out what fucking around with a Pharaoh Noss uh, colony means to uh, Abanu Akeem. They're going to find out what happens. And Nick is going to, I'm going to make sure that Nick brings back evidence just to, to seal that storyline up. Because it, it was unexpected that Lamar was going to be leaving the season. We didn't get, it wasn't like we didn't know two seasons ago or anything. So uh, I made sure to lay what can close that thread up. But uh, those are the big ones I'm looking at. Uh, I'm curious to see if y'all can find a way to kill that cockroach loading. The motherfucker's a cockroach. Oh, yeah, he is. And I've got some plans for him that's going to... It's going to be fun. I, I'm just going to put it that way. I've got some some major uh, oh shit moments planned for loading. But we're going to have to wait to see on that one. So uh, those are mine. And now you can have yours. I, I, I said mine. <laughs> I'll let any of y'all go first if you want. I'll jump in. Um, I think for me, um, getting to see the the continuing saga of uh, Nicholas and Isabella both kind of coming to terms with like everything that's sort of come up with Amelia and how that affects both of them and I, I'm interested to see if Isabella ends up taking out some of her assuredly still present 
uh, frustrations with Nicholas. Um, if some of that comes out towards him over being like, it's Nicholas's family, um, and Nicholas's sister, you know, why she's in the situation she's in, you know, to a degree. So if if that's going to get thrown up to Nicholas or just like their whole, you know, dynamic, um, I think will be really interesting. Um, past that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, all the cult shit, I just, I'm fascinated by cults. Um, and so just seeing that like in the vampire game with Shanky's like brain, um, aside from that, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just eager to see what new sort of shit we can find ourselves to get into. You mean you're 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 eager to find what big red buttons you can push? Tomato potato. You know, it it is what it is. Yeah, I think that it's they're the one the same for me right now. Like the most terrifying is like the Amelia De Carlo because she's literally said that she's gonna kill me. Uh which is like, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> and like, usually it's like the coterie on the whole, and like, or like it's Decker like spewing bullshit. Uh, but Amelia, like, she's a wild card. Um, and so, like, it's terrifying for the same reason. It's like great. And I really want to see where it goes. Um, because I guess, however it works out, it'll be one hell of a story. I have a couple that are both exciting and do concern me a little bit. Um, Definitely Jackie's son, because now she knows who his sire was and that he's definitely the Nosferatu that she's met. That's a complication. Because all the pieces point to he was kept from her, she was kept from him. And she knows enough about Nosferatu to know how they condition their broods of clan before sect, clan above all else. So that's a problem. That is a problem. Um, It is not going to be the sweet mother-son reunion. And I'm looking forward to it. I really am. Um, I'm also really looking forward to, I don't know when it will happen or when we're going to get into it, but I'm really looking forward to getting more into Jackie's cult stuff, into the cult of Mithras stuff, because I know there's been some things that Shanky and I have discussed for potential story hooks for her that will lead to some really cool exploration of that at some point. If I can interrupt, I think to do that for your story, to make it easier, the reason we're having trouble with Mithras is because it's he's linked to Gary, uh, your cult, the, the center of it. I think... Not Gary. Or not Gary. Uh, Milwaukee. Milwaukee. I think what we need to do to, if you want to bring more of your Mithras in, is we need to establish more Mithras people in the city of Chicago. And then it's not having to go to Milwaukee to deal with it because Milwaukee is a, a problem for just in oh, it is. story. It is. So uh, that's just a storyteller. Oh, I know. I think we should work on that. We will. We will. Because I actually have some ideas. Um, but yeah, and that's something that we do at this cast is we we brainstorm ideas and 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 come together and, and collaborate and come up with a really good plan. But they'll um, never know all the details of it. Right. That's I, I never know all the details. But yeah, um, there's I, I really look forward to exploring more of that because we've seen little bits and pieces here and there. And there's been things that she said that's very Mithraic and stuff like that. But you haven't really seen her truly involved in the cult. And. And that is something I look forward to exploring. It can be problematic as fuck, but you know what? It's going to be fun. (laughs) House of Lola. (laughs) Uh, Yes! 
like so, so, yeah I, I i will say i am a huge fan of the baja recult uh from a player standpoint but i'm curious how my character is going to interact with it because i don't fucking know and so i know i've caught every session where i'm always like i don't know what i'm doing tonight is it is it the new moon am i going to the house of Lilith tonight so i know that's going to happen in season eight so i'm, I'm looking forward to that storyline uh but like from an actual Ginny non house of Lilith thing because that's more of almost a business thing for her at this point uh it's the Isabella story because Isabella has been very nice to her and while she's not so stupid to think that like Isabella isn't necessarily like partially bonded to her she appreciates having somebody that's like being nice to her um and she's never going to like chase that as like anything more than like friendship coterie they're people that she's trying to like protect as it were but like she will do what she needs to do to protect Isabella uh, she would do what she needs to do to protect other, everybody in the coterie, of course, but like she is closer to Isabella at this time. Uh, and so, yeah. And there's probably some of her own personal preferences and things in that involved in that, why she's closer to Isabella than she is to uh, Roscoe or Nicholas or even with like Lamar, even though her, her and Lamar were trying to drum up some business stuff. So it's like, it's kind of that... That's a storyline that's going to involve all of the coterie, but like I know that when we start getting really rolling on it, while Jackie is always the uh, the Ventrue shield, Genevieve is the uh, the unseen blade <laughs> in a sense, and that is also another form of defense. So you shank them before you can before you they get close to you. And you Best defense is a good offense. <laughs> yeah. So. You know, I'll go ahead and uh, throw in, you know, my two cents. I'm looking forward to everything that you guys are going to do going forward. And I, I want to see how you guys take down these different threads, how you deal with them or, you know, manage them, you know, to kick the can down, have time to kick the can down the road. Um, in terms of trouble, I think for Lamar, what's most troubling is that with him leaving, he is... He, there, there's a little bit of worry for him for who's going to be the hammer for the code, not because he doesn't think anyone is capable of it. He knows that there are several people who are suited to it, but from the start for him, that was his role when he showed up. Um, that was his role. And he knew that. So he was fine, you know, being the out where I'll fuck you up guy, you know, clan, I'll fuck you up. He was very happy to announce himself as being of you know, that clan. But now, but he has also dealt with the others and knows that they are not as outwardly violence induced as himself. And, you know, except for maybe Ginny. And now he's like, okay, who's going to step up and fill and, and fill in that spot? Someone and has to be the intimidator. Someone has to be the, uh, the enforcer. And he's like, he's got his ideas on who it could be. Oh, Nicholas could so be it. Okay, he is creepy. He's got obvious predator. He's deadpan. That's intimidating as fuck. Okay. <laughs> just saying something, just matter of factly, we are going to ruin your night. <laughs> and he's got the fortitude to take a hit. So you know what? <laughs> he's <laughs> uh, what? No one wants to say Roscoe? Come on. Mm -mm. Uh, he's too uh... nice. <laughs> we know Yurian, who plays Roscoe, can do it. We saw it in Wraith. Oh, yeah. But it's not a Roscoe thing. It's trait. not the Roscoe thing. But no, Nicholas can so be that enforcer. He can be the one that does the intimidation for real. <laughs> it's a different method. It's more subtle. Look, But it's, it's even two, more creepy. <laughs> it can be a two-pronged attack. But first thing first, Nicholas is going to have to go back to... Uh, Bronwyn's joint and he's going to take some lessons from her. <laughs> Anyone like to add anything? No? Okay. Um, Vampire Brat asks, if you could choose one ability that your character has right now in real life, what would it be? Intimidation Attitude. factor. Attitude. 
an image. Like vicissitude is uh, what oh, I vicissitude. said. Okay, vicissitude. <laughs> if I had that, that would be the number one choice. Yeah. For obvious reasons, for anyone who knows me. Uh, actually, probably the new... No, shit. I was going to say the new scale I picked up, but I don't think so. It has uses. Um, probably uh, Unseen Passage. Because uh, I'm broke and I have no qualm. I would have no qualms stealing from someone. <laughs> so, <laughs> at least you're honest. Look, 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 look. If they're rich and I need money, fuck them. So. <clears throat> I'll answer it for me. Uh, I wish I was as confident as real li- in real life as it appears I am on stream. <laughs> uh, I know a lot of people watch me storytell and. Uh, some people told me it looks, I look effortless doing it. Uh, I have imposter syndrome rather massively. And uh, I wish, uh, yeah, I wish that I was just that confident as I am when I put the hat and the glasses on the rest of the time, because I'm a fucking hot, anxious mess most of the time. I think for me, uh just because I am as weird in real life as Nicholas is in game. Uh, I think it'd be fun to have the ability to see and talk to ghosts. Um, I think that would, there would be a lot of really interesting opportunities. Um, Just like getting like firsthand history conversations from like people. Um, Of course you'll get like, you know, I guess like the scary ghosts, but you know, it, it's, you got to weigh the pros and cons, but yeah, I, I think, yeah, I think that would be the one for me. Cause I don't know, like the rest of the things that Nicholas has are things that I would necessarily want other than just, yeah, I just think that would be really interesting. Mm, for me. I have to agree with Brad there. Um, Yeah, I would take, because Jackie just picked it up, I would take like Oblivion Sight. I have seen and dealt with ghosts most of my life. Um, And to be able to do that more reliably and consistently would be very fucking cool. Um, if I had to choose like one of like a just a skill, um, it would probably or a facet of uh, personality, it would probably be Lamar's intimidation slash comfort with resorting to violence. You know, for Lamar, it's it's like the it's like the saying says, um, well, uh, I know violence isn't the answer. I got it wrong on purpose. So yeah, that that would be kind of the thing that uh, if I could, I take uh, I take from Lamar just because you know it's like looking at somebody like someone someone starts something with you, just you give them that look like, please, please go ahead and make, go ahead and make my day. I I, I fucking care. Uh, that would be kind of great. But if I'm talking disciplines, um, probably the arms because one I get so much stuff done, then. I could also get so much stuff done. So. <laughs> the implications of those is fucking fun. <laughs> so, yeah. And why didn't Lamar get the fisherman's uh, daughter and fisherman's daughter to uh, the retentacling video? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> oh, you know, you know, Roscoe slipped him into his carry on or whatever. Like, 100%. <laughs> Oh. Luckily, Jackie doesn't fang bang and tell. <laughs> All right. Uh, Maddox asks, any of you ever thought about utilizing any of the firebug kindred in the city or is it too much of a risk? Oh, that's always on the table as a potential. That is always on the table as a potential. It just hasn't been utilized yet due to risk versus reward. Um, but it is always on the table. Because all of us have some kind of connections with fire, bug, fucking kindred. <laughs> 
I can answer that because that is always in our bag of tricks. We just waiting for the right moment to pull that shit out. Okay. <laughs> Um, devilish darkness. Would you accept a member of the ministry into your coterie? Fuck no. They aren't even really cam. <laughs> well, this came up a couple of months ago too. Like, yeah. What if what if someone joined the cast and wanted to play ministry? Like they would be politely but firmly told to pick something else. Yeah. Or they would be at first session. Yeah. Or they would have a very, uh, they'd be a core cast member with a very short run. Very short run. First session. You're what? Okay. Oh, man. You actually had someone die in character creation. That's they'd be best off claiming Kai Teeth. Yeah. <laughs> but as soon as you flash those fucking snake fangs or them fucking eyes, man, it's done. No. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Uh, looking to see. Okay. Devilish Darkness also asks, who gets to take care of Lamar's baby Lasombra now? Jackie? I asked that question. I did. <laughs> uh, not it. <laughs> not it. <laughs> no. Shanky I mean, had an answer for that, though. For which one? Uh, who gets to take care of Lamar's baby Lasombra now? You'll find out. You'll find out, but it's not Jackie. It's the baby Lasamber is not the coterie. Not the coterie. Uh, the baby Lasamber will continue to come up because there's story threads attached to that that are mm -hmm. not just Lamar, though Lamar was the one who was the primary. You can rest assured there's other story threads attached to that particular character. So expect Celia to come up. Think about her situation. She was. Part-time Lamar's part-time under the prince's purview. So that may answer your question. Um, Vampire Brat asks, how are you going to handle the Zal situation going forward, Timber Brat? Um, so kind of addressed part of that at the end of the season um, with... Uh, possibly looking into making some of his own deals with spirits um, to see if there's something he can do on his end. Um, I mean, obviously I think at some point it's going to come down to a confrontation, uh, a more definitive confrontation with Alessandro, um, whatever that ends up entailing. So uh, yeah, I think for him, the Zal thing, it's, present um but now with amelia yeah zal's like an ongoing project um yeah i think with with all of the revelations with amelia that's kind of taking a lot of his brain power um so yeah I, it's the big thing for that is because yeah, Nicholas obviously likes to press buttons and the buttons he likes to press aren't very uh, small. Um, and so I think, yeah, I just, I think Zal is going to be tricky because it'll be, it has to be like a combination of something that would make sense for Nicholas to want to do. Um, at a time where Nicholas feels that he's best suited to do it, um, which is kind of why, you know, there was a big gap in time between the first time uh, Alessandro threatened him and then, you know, him going back and talking to Zal and getting threatened again um, was, yeah, it's just, it's not Nicholas's immediate plan but he he she is definitely on his short list of things to address um yeah and it just it regardless it'll be fun getting to play that out with maddox maddox is a great role player and it's brilliant to have him join us anytime he does i mean it, it, in any game he's a brilliant role player so yeah um 
All right. Well, speaking of the devil, um, a <laughs> non-serious question for Maddox. What is your character's favorite animal? Jackie's would be dread, right? <laughs> he is delicious. But <laughs> In all the ways. <laughs> Sorry, got into character there for a minute. <laughs> uh, pass, no. Uh, <clears throat> favorite animal? Yeah, your Shit. character's favorite animal. Character's favorite animal, yeah, no. Uh, Genevieve is probably in her own way, doesn't think rats are great, but rats are great because she can talk to them and they're 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 everywhere they can get anywhere they go everywhere they're great things to ask questions of not in the nosferatu -y sense she's not looking to breed rats she's not looking to do that but like she's not a dog person obviously uh she's not a cat person she's not a snake person so <laughs> yeah rats are actually very smart creatures too mm -hmm. they are smart little animals it's funny that you mentioned snakes. So I think that it would actually be Isabella's. I think that there's something. You know they're dangerous, but sometimes they seem so unopposing. But you know they can strike. And when they do, it's very sudden. Um, I think she would admire that. Uh, knowing that like patience is something that she's always been taught. But like, I think she would think there's some beauty in it, too. I think she'd have to say a snake. I would say, honestly, Jackie likes a lot of animals. Her backstory, she never really got to have any pets. She always wanted pets, but never really could have any. Even as an adult, she really couldn't due to the lifestyle she had. And she likes a lot of animals. She actually has some ta a taxidermied ostrich in her haven. <laughs> I thought you were going to talk about those rats with. Uh... Oh, and she lo she loves Cedric's rats. No, she thought you were going to talk about the burlesque rats. And the, and, 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 and that, no, rats. I, 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 Mama wants those. Okay, <laughs> Mama wants the burlesque taxidermied rats. Okay, <laughs> Showtime burlesque, Showtime taxidermy sells them, and they sell out so fucking fast. <laughs> But yeah, um, no, she, I mean, she likes the, she likes Dred's wolves, his, his gold wolves. She, she likes animals. Um, she doesn't really have any animal kin because she never had a lot of exposure to animals, but she always wanted animals. Um, growing up and be, being an adult in a major city like Paris, space is a premium. And having animals is a luxury. And the era you were there, uh, you'd have probably had to eat them at some point. Exactly, because she had some very dire straits in her background. So it, it wasn't really an option for her to have pets at any point. Um, but yeah, she really does actually love animals. Um, and so it's not a... But if she were to pick one that was her absolute favorite... <sighs> She would probably be a dog person. A little bit different from Mama, because Mama's more of a cat person, but I think Jackie would be more of a dog person. She likes loyalty. She likes companionship. She likes a steadfast companion. So I think she would be a dog person. And she sure as hell wouldn't want an animal that's going to piss all in the back seat of Lamar's car. No, she would be more of a dog person evil cat <laughs> speaking of which lamar yeah no cats he has trust issues with those motherfuckers um no cats no rats no wolves um no dogs so i i think for lamar lamar would want a low maintenance type of animal which he would probably like fish like just a goldfish in its bowl i kind of has pictured lamar as a scorpion kind of guy unabashedly you know what you're dealing with you know exactly what it is and 
also yes, but then he's got but then he's got to warn people don't fuck with the scorpion. He's always got like warn people, and after a while that probably get grating. Like, look, I didn't told you once. You want to go ahead and fuck around and find out? You go right ahead. That was just the way my brain pictured. I could see him with just a scorpion, a pet scorpion, going. If you're dumb enough to put your hand in the cage, I'm not going to stop you. But I'm also not taking you to the hospital after. Yeah, I feel like Nicholas Yeah, it, it, I think it's a tough one for me. Um, Because there's like the obvious, you know, he probably likes, you know, like crows, ravens, vultures, like any sort of like, you know, carrion birds. Um, But at the same time, I think it's being like medically trained. I think he might have fascination with like lizards that, um, you know, can lose parts of themselves and regenerate them. Um, which would be fascinating to him. Um, and then there's like the, um, the like science part of his brain that would say humans would be his favorite animal. Um, cause humans are absolutely animals. Um, yeah, it, I don't think it's, it, it's, I, I, I would say carrion birds is probably the most likely, but I don't know that animals are really a thing for him. Like outside of, you know, training and doing like um, dissections and like classes or. uh, Yeah, yeah. So I'll say like carrion birds in general and just kind of leave it at that. Okay. Um, Miser Mark did ask, so how many sets? And he stopped. He said, I mean, ministry bodies, are you guys planning to pile up? All of them. <laughs> They're planning to stack them like motherfucking cord cordwood. Wood, and they will burn for a fortnight. Mm-hmm. Just stack the bodies <laughs> in the corner in rows, pile them up, throw a tarp over them so that, you know, they can dry out a bit, you know. If anybody knows of any of them, that haven't been added to the ever-growing pile. Let us know. Let us know. We'll add them. Another. Mm-hmm. We'll make room. <laughs> I won't be bringing your reverend into people. the story. Okay. Oh, he'll be next. I Preston. know you'd kill him quick. <laughs> yes, just like you know, Roche. All your characters dead. <laughs> you say that. So Ludlow is the new primogen. Yeah, Ludlow's dead. So. <laughs> All right. Um. Looking through, let's see. Okay, so I see Miser Mark actually did highlight his question. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, what breed of dog would Jackie prefer? Something French and purebred. No. No. Understand. Jackie likes power. Jackie really likes power. Pomeranian. Nope. Doberman. No. A Rottweiler. Yep. Come on, Jackie's not a corgi kind of person? She is not a corgi kind why of person. A, why a Rottweiler over a Doberman? Rottweilers are basically head-to-toe muscle. And they will fuck you up. <laughs> Fair. I was wondering because like Dobermans are like generally like they're they can be as like aggressive. They're not as they strong, can be. and they're sleeker. They're very looking, sleek. Which I feel like But yeah, but like no, Jackie, Jackie is the sleek one. She's the sleek okay. and and subtly, you know, strong. No, she likes power and Rottweilers just exude power. Mm-hmm. I could almost see Jackie being one of those people that's got like a brindle pit bull that's jacked. Oh, she probably would do that too. 
Yeah, or or even even a, a you know, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, she would like a powerful animal that is loyal, steadfast, protective. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. Yeah, so any other questions from chat, make sure you use the uh, channel points at the bottom. Now we will open it up for any cast questions. I did mine at the start. So. Mm -hmm. And for those wondering, Roscoe's not here. He had prior engagement. He couldn't make it. Yeah. But, you know. I have a question. Go ahead. What is Lamar going to miss most about the Coterie? You know what? Getting together in the club and going over all the stuff that ha that people are doing on a regular basis because it, it it made him feel not only linked into the group but also like you know it, it was for him it was always like this is how I this is how I plan my week kill this guy find this guy put his head through a wall make sure he knows not to mess with Isabella again you know throw this guy off of uh, you know practice defenestration with Jenny go, you know, go uh, with Jackie stand menacingly behind her pull gun. If necessary, have deep, deep, but non-emotional talk with Nicholas, even though it was sort of emotional. And then, you know, just quietly hang with Roscoe, let him talk, ask him like random question about, you know, can he touch certain, object in the corner don't touch that object all right fine uh you know ask him you know ask him to say what he saw and just being around you know his friends and then going out to kill somebody with him so those are you know in in la it's going to be really hard to find people that he that he gels with enough to you know either not shoot them in the face or you know, like, hey, you want to, you know, do you need help while you shoot this guy in the face sort of thing? Well, I've said it before and I'll say it again. You know, your seat's always open. If uh, real life calms down, Lamar can always come back to Chicago and uh, you'll slide right back into that bottom right corner. Awesome. Because, uh, and, you know, I've been thinking about what Lamar is going to do when he gets to L.A. because that, that, there's the whole, you know, five you know, finding destiny and dealing with the stuff that's going on around her and then hopefully not getting himself ashed in the process because he's probably got no fans out that way either. So it's like, you know, text the guy, texting everybody each week. Hey, still, I'm still here. You know, don't, don't sell my stake in the club or anything. And because of the mess up with the uh, phone, Joe, the text will be, Hey, I'm still staked. <laughs> <laughs> And they're just People, wonder. Like, did, did he actually get? Do we need to go out there? <laughs> How's he texting yeah. if he staked? Jesus. Then ask him a question instead of the uh, thumbs up emoji. He means to send. It's eggplant. Just watch out. <laughs> Don't open any videos that Jenny sends you. Yep. There you go. <laughs> I'll just label them like how self defense tips, things like that. Miser Mark did ask, uh, which sect gets bullet priority by Lamar on the daily, S Sabat or Anarch? That's that's a tough one because he doesn't like either of them. Um, actually, Sabat because he knows what they've become, kind of, and yeah. Get, get, you kill the cockro you kill the, the rats before you kill the roaches or one of those two. So yeah, but definitely get rid of the Sabat first because the Anarchs, you can at least kind of press gang them into doing the right thing, you know, eight times out of ten. And then those other two, you just shoot them, you shoot someone in the head, and the rest kind of get the message. Any other cast questions? I'll say it. Uh, 
least favorite part of season seven that doesn't involve Lamar leaving. Okay, because that's like the number one least I, favorite I know. thing, okay? Uh, <laughs> I'm a kind of storyteller. I can take, you know, criticism. So uh, least favorite part of the season. If you don't have one, you don't have one. But, you know, everyone has a least favorite part. Go ahead. Victor is not dead. A valid. Honestly, a Luke dying because I was really looking forward to that kindred warfare thing. Right. That like ruined like my whole season's plot line in my head. <laughs> you ruined a hell of a lot of my plans for the season two, but uh, the dice determined it. I know. I, I, roll the dice I don't I blame you for it. I really don't blame well, you I know, for but, it. But, yeah. but yeah, that was my least favorite because literally I had so much in my head going for this, like things Jackie could do to just fuck him up. It's and it times. was just like nothing. It's one of those times I wish I was willing to ignore the dice rolls after I uh, deter, when I decide I'm going to let the dice determine something. Uh, my own, call it OCD, call it whatever you want. Uh, if I say the dice are going to determine something, I roll the dice and I don't change what the dice said. Uh, even when I'm going, God damn that, I just had all these plans. I just fucking lost them because I did let the dice determine it. Fuck me. <laughs> fuck me. <laughs> Yeah, that would be my least favorite of the whole season. I agree, though. Victor should have already been Ash by now. But you know what? We'll get to him eventually. <laughs> I think... Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I guess I have two things. Uh... One is very much the consequences of my own actions, which, like, I can't really be mad at you for. Uh, so, like, the playing under the influence, so damn hard. <laughs> and dealing with the addiction side of it, it's so hard. Um, but again, like, that's character stuff and, like, nothing that we can really do about it. But it's hard. Um, other thing is, it's also more of just, like, a beyond people's control things when i when i rolled so well on that like st like looking around to see if anyone was near me but they had rolled just a little bit better oh it was so good it was like seven successes of like eight dice or something and, and it was just eight. a bit better yeah it was oh breaks my heart in case you're wondering uh when i beat you by one uh she was in the back seat of your car oh shit well I mean, she's getting a lot closer than I would like. Cool. <laughs> Could have gone without knowing that. <laughs> because yeah, that's what I uh, you would never notice a shadow in the backseat of your car. No. Especially if it's not sitting up in the seat. If it just lays in the seat, it's just another shadow. I don't think Isabella would... Like, even if she, like, decides to get more, like intense with her searching i don't think she would consider a shadow in her back seat i think she would look to see if there's someone there when you find out uh that's what she's doing you're going to install led lights all in the back seat of your car it's going to be lit up like a street racer's car because you're yeah, going to make sure there's, there's no shadows now you're going to change with the music it's be great <laughs> it's uh and it's also going to serve as a uh a deter for uh for satites it's just as flashing bright LED Come on, vehicle. Keisha, take a ride. <laughs> 10,000 lumens, lumens of uh, LED light in the backseat of her car. It's going to be lit up like a a, uh, a runway light as she's yeah, driving down putting, the street. Start putting resources into a, a souped up car. Uh, for my no points in drive, again. Um, <laughs> that drive is car. optional. <laughs> That's going to be I a reoccurring thing. Uh, they're red in it. No points in drive. Let's go fast. I think for me, um, it's nothing like in game or character wise. Um, I think my least favorite thing about the season is on the fly making the decision to have you take control of Nicholas when he frenzied. Um, having played werewolf and having had. Um, 
a murder machine frenzy. Um, I, I I feel like like a hundred percent the way it was handled was a hundred percent what Nicholas would have done because he would have just headed for the door. Um, I just wish that I would have made the decision to play that out myself. I think yeah. that's the only thing I didn't like. Uh, you know, I thought about using plague necrotic touch, but the beast wouldn't. You would use physical ones, but not plaguing. That wouldn't even occur. You just wanted to get out to hurt something to to inflict injury. So, well, and I think I think Nicholas would also realize that he knows he can't do it to Kendra. He can only do it to. Um, now, if if uh, Peter or um, Etienne had been um, like nearby, because I think it can affect ghouls perfectly fine. Oh, it can. Mm-hmm. It can technically um, infect a uh, kindred's blood too. Uh, makes them a carrier. Makes them a carrier. Yeah. Um, Which is a whole nother problem. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think yeah, Nicholas wouldn't have done that to him at that point. I think it was just he wanted to get out and very specifically wouldn't even know where he was going. It would just be go out and look to destroy something. Um, preferably Amelia if you could find it, but um yeah, yeah. And that's my only my only thing for the season, just because it's it's it was just one of those random things where it's like, yeah, you can do it. And it's like looking back on it, it's like I could have done it. My mental image was you were gonna go right to outside of uh Isabella's bar and go completely ape shit in an alley trying to get Amelia to show up. Attacking shadows. You attacking shadows, fucking up garbage cans, knocking shit around. Anybody nearby you were going to grab up because I probably would have frenzied at that. Yeah. Like, get the fuck away from here. What are you doing? That is how the the focus of the beast frenzy was Amelia. You didn't know where she was, but you knew where she she you don't know where she is, but you know where she was. Mm. And you were going to get there one way or another and fucking unleash some fury on that location. Good thing you didn't have C4 like Lamar, because it might have been a blown up building. Just in case. Yeah, and then then uh Isabella actually would have started shooting Nicholas. Thankfully, I don't think the beast can make C4 work. I don't think it's gonna comprehend to go through that much effort. I'll admit, I don't know if there's anything I didn't like about the season necessarily or was disappointed in uh i oftentimes struggle to remember all this stuff from like the early parts of the season um and so yeah uh probably the most disappointing to me and this was not this was my own choice was and this is just kind of like for my own like interaction with the story stuff like I really wanted to interact with the House of Lilith. I had set we'd set the we'd set the thing for that in season five, did nothing in season six, finally got to do it in season seven. And then everybody else got to interact with House of Lilith while I played Chaperone, uh, which was to me was disappointing. And it's it was and that's perfectly fine. I don't I the scenes were good, don't get me wrong. But it was one of those things where it's like for the player side, it was disappointing. For the character, the character was not disappointed player was disappointed but that was more of just like my own want to interact uh and then it'd be like and i could have said sure i'll take an really special too but i was tr- i've been trying to subtly show genevieve's um like watching over people side of her because that's a bit that was a huge part of her backstory and it has been nothing in the chronicle so far it felt like so this season i did a lot more of the trying to show that she was trying to watch over people which is why she always said like i'm chaperoning or whatever instead of doing something if that makes sense uh so yeah but just from a from a, that was my own personal uh my own personal issue as it were it was not a story issue it was not a scene issue it was not a players of the table issue that was more of a like a me and because even for genevieve she didn't mind it not being as big or scene for her per se but like i said if we're talking about disappointing stuff yeah so no it's valid and you you made sacrifices on on, the, uh, on a number of those kind of scenes and other things you've been wanting to pursue because uh, the nature of a six person cast with the shorter episode times, uh, you are very good at being willing to table things 
and put it aside, you know, temporarily, though a lot of times it becomes longer than temporarily, uh, to do other scenes or to uh, do more group scenes. And it's fair that you'd be disappointed at that because it's just, it's a tight nature sometimes when we're looking at two to three hour episodes and Jesus Christ, that, that's a lot of shit to do. I mean, if you break it down into people, uh, if we do a three hour episode, it's 180 minutes, six people. Uh, that's only 30 minutes each a scene. That's not much time. So, yeah, it, I understand the disappointment. That's something I have felt too at times. That same type of disappointment. It's just a part of how our format is. <clears throat> Oh, oh, I know. It, the funny thing is, is that there's the part of my the player who's like, hmm, I don't know. I want to interact with this stuff. Maybe I will end up interacting with this stuff and roping another person or two into it also. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do these cool, you've got cool scenes you want to go do interact with yourself, but then you're like, but I also like playing with these people and I want to, oh, God damn it. Yeah. But no, it's it. That's valid. That's totally valid. And until you've been on the cast, it's really tough to understand. It sometimes is. the behind the scenes, back and forth about what scenes we're going to show in any given night because we know we have limited time and we have to pick the scenes that are impactful. That we that the players and the viewers are impactful. And uh, there's been a lot of scenes from everybody. It's not just you. All the players here at this table and even the previous cast members. There's been a lot of scenes that we would have loved to have played that ended up either cut or ended up being a blurb where, you know, somebody mentions it, mm -hmm. that the format we're doing is, it is what it is. And it's a, it's a sacrifice that, you know, it's tough. Yeah. Because we don't do four plus hour sessions. <laughs> we couldn't record those on a Thursday night. No. <laughs> People have day jobs. <laughs> yeah, me included. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't see any more questions in chat. And we are right about the two hour mark. Uh, there's a question about the ghouls that Maddox asked. Before yeah, but I asked. also but, responded to him in yeah, chat. But I, for the viewers that are watching it on YouTube, uh, Maddox did ask whether you're going to see more of the Coterie's ghouls. Well, of course. Of course. We're down a cast member. So you'll probably see a little bit more ghoul interaction. So. I will say that I don't know if Amelia... Uh, if Isabella would bring Emilio out more, because I think she's very hesitant. Oh, yeah, that makes sense right now. She's under threat. She's going to protect her yeah, touchdown. She, yeah, no. He's yeah. also a troublemaker. <laughs> he is a yeah, troublemaker. Like, <laughs> like, she's going to, like, he probably, she's going to try and, like, pin him down. But even then, like, he'll fight that. So, like, somebody brought way, up but... firebugs in the city. Emilio, Emilio is, is a firebug. Yeah. Because that came out when y'all were going up again in Milwaukee into the null zone. He was ready to... That's to always in the bag shit. of tricks. <laughs> yeah, he, he's done it before. He doesn't mind burning shit to the ground. He likes that. That's fun. Yeah. I mean, oh, don't worry. I, I'm, I was glad to integrate Tasha a little bit more into season seven. I'm looking forward to her coming out again in season eight and, and beyond. And I also, I always love it when Evan comes up. Fucking chains. Uh, pull Q, Evan, whatever you want to call him. He's a man of many talents and most of them are getting his ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> I also, I'm sorry. I, I, when I, when I created the character in my head, I never thought that we would have this like goofy, like just like punch each other kind of like back and forth, which I love. Y'all are almost Evan... like siblings. It's almost like a sibling dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> We're a couple that have been married way too long. <laughs> No sex, nothing. Just married, you know, 50 years at this point where there's just, you know. Banter. No sex, it's just banter. <laughs> I, but I enjoy it. It's great. It's, fun. it's great. It, it's funny you brought up Evan. Uh, you know, we've not seen Evan involved in a fight yet? No. Yeah, there's a reason. You don't want to get him? Genevieve is yeah. cautious about him. Only, she knows he can fight. She's only cautious about him because she does not want Fiorenza thinking she broke something that she owns. That makes sense. She's, she's more worried about Fiorenza than she is Evan. And you can bet Fiorenza thinks she owns, uh, Evan is her property. It is one of her assets. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh she knows. <laughs> Jenny knows. So. I am looking forward to exploring more of the, now that you're learning more about Evan than you knew before, more of that 
Jenny and Evan? I'm looking forward to exploring more with Peter. You found out new stuff about him, not mm-hmm. this season, but last season about, mm-hmm. you know, he actually uh, failed at it. Well, he didn't. He got booted out of the army uh, in the EOD school and shit like that. There's little bits that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to exploring more with Peter because he's been trained now. So he is, you know, fully a ghoul in his own right by Jackie's standards. So he he need yeah, he's going to be taking a little more forefront. I mean, Etienne is like best ghoul fucking ever, but it, it it's time to explore a little bit of her newbie ghoul. And so. it, I knew Matthew uh you're probably not going to have Matthew involved in any of the more dangerous stuff because that's a that's a touchstone, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I also but I also think with Nicholas becoming both colder and more emotionally volatile that Matthew would like it would still, I think, be interesting to see Matthew trying to, like, keep him anchored, keep him centered, because that would be the person who would do it for him. That would be cool to see. Yeah, I'm still getting the feel for how the full personality I plan to play, because for those the viewers that don't understand, while I do take input from the players about their ghouls, uh, ghouls ultimately are NPCs. And as storyteller, uh, if I let the players control everything on their ghoul, uh, you end up with some bullshit ghouls that are, uh, how can I put it, uh, excessively tailored in a way that makes them extremely useful, but could never have been something prior to being a ghoul and had those skill sets. And that's not the players at this table, but I've dealt with players who they wanted to make their own ghoul and, you know, they were just all focused on like six skills. And it's like, but that's not how a human being is. You have lots of skills. You wouldn't be, you know, five dots in brawl, five in firearms, five in, you know, uh, melee and, you know, five in awareness. That's not how this works, people. Yeah. Um, it will also be interesting now that Lamar has left for the West Coast. Um, he had two goals. One of them's new, so that one's not going to be as much of a problem. Though, how do you deal with the father, uh, Father Frank, when the blood bond breaks? Murder him. Or is Lamar, <laughs> or is Lamar sending him a vial of blood every month to drink? He's blood bound. He would have to drink it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if Lamar trusts the uh, the post the postal service that well. A uh, vial of blood's an odd thing to send in the mail, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, um, I, I'm gonna be real murder him. Um, but <laughs> well, uh, Lamar did say to put the fear of God into him, and I think when the coterie shows up, they might put uh, the fear and uh, a first chance to meet God into him. Yeah, yeah. Um, because yeah, he's a fucking problem. Um, but yeah. <laughs> But no, definitely, I think Jackie would at least hopefully temporarily take Tariq on and sustain his bond. So, yeah, Um, he's pivotal to the South Side business interests, so he would have to uh, be kept under bond. Yeah, but um, but yeah, the uh, the 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 fucking priest. Yeah, no, he's a problem. (laughs) Yeah, that's one to, to to take into account. And I'm actually thinking of, of putting more of uh, Michael yeah, into Roscoe's because he's got that goal. You only hear about him maintaining the bookstore, but he's actually he's skilled, so fucked up. He's a skilled ritualist. Yeah, but he's so fucked up. For those that don't understand. He's a ghoul with abandonment issues. Yeah. He... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Passed around like a fucking blunt. <laughs> puff, puff, you know, pass around the circle. <sighs> but yeah, I think I'm gonna. He's a house ghoul. <laughs> but I think give him a be... sock and free him. <laughs> he needs to be more into the story because I think it'd be interesting to see how Roscoe deals with. Because it's interesting from a storyteller's perspective to see how each player interacts with their ghoul in a different way. Uh, because I feel like go ahead. 
I was going to say, I feel like it would be interesting given how he's treated the whole thing with Samantha. Like, Samantha's very clearly bad for Roscoe, and he's just stuck by it. Like, I feel like it'd probably be a very similar situation. So, like, Roscoe would have to deal with it. Yeah. Which would be good. Yeah, I, I, I love watching the unique players' personalities for their characters when you give them ghouls, you know, how Jenny and Evan played out how uh Verlin or Jackie and uh at the end it played out Amelia and Isabella you know Nicholas and and Matthew for Lamar Tariq I mean Lamar brought him in as a gang member pretty much I mean that's Tariq a boss you know but it was that was their relationship I want to see what Lamar or how Roscoe handles it you know bring him in Jackie wants more Peter how is Peter going to react with Michael? You know, the interactions between the ghouls, which are tough for me to do because I'm playing more than one character at once in a literal conversation with each other. But as we've established, Emilio with Peter playing pranks on him and shit. Uh, what will Michael do if Emilio plays pranks on him? Or Evan hits Michael. You know, Michael's a very uptight, very uptight. And then Evan hits him with the himbo routine. You know? Yeah, because, like, I'm really excited about the Peter aspect of really exploring a bit more of that because Jackie and Etienne have been partnered up for over a century. They are, at this point, almost like two halves of a whole. Um, the And then Peter, being the newcomer, how does he fit into that dynamic? You know? And how does he interact and how do they interact with him in this dynamic? Um, he's, you know, having he he's, you know, fully bound, fully trained. He's a ghoul within his own right, but he's still the youngest member of this trio. So what what is the I, I look forward to exploring that. Yeah, it's gonna be an interesting one to to go into, honestly. All of it. Yeah, I want to see how Peter, when he's exposed to Emilio, when he's exposed to Evan. Matthew, I mean, Matthew's the grounding thing for Nicholas. And Nicholas isn't bringing him anywhere because it's touchstone. And unlike Etienne, who is, I mean, Jackie don't mind putting him in danger. That's what he's there for. But Nicholas has a lot different feelings about Matthew, about in danger. So Jackie walks into danger all the fucking time. Right. Etienne can go right with her. Etienne has served dangerous kindred. And been in danger his entire time. Mm -hmm. It's nothing new to him. And if you sheltered him from that, for someone like Etienne, with his personality and his, his history, it would be a insult to him. Yes. To what he's done and what he's accomplished and what he, who he is to pamper him. So any other last questions before we go? Urian has just showed up in chat. He finally has uh, returned home from his thing. So any questions you wanted to ask your fellow cast members there, Urian, before we end this? Yeah, please ask. And seriously, I see that comment. If I need more Peter, that sounds like a McStaver Studios problem. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> so many comments I could make. <laughs> so many I could make. Yep, so many comments. <laughs> But that would only be on Only Fangs, okay? Only Fangs, that's only right. Only Fangs. <laughs> McStabber Studios, Only Fangs, okay? <laughs> coming, to you coming to you live from McStabber Studios' shed, it's Shanky McStabber. Good God, no, oh, God. No, that's an infection waiting to happen. That shed, that's an infection waiting to happen. Oh, goodness. Any questions, Yuri? Come on. Because I think we've covered most of them. I mean, we're, we're all going to be very sad to see <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> that 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 would fit. Oh God, Brad! <laughs> what are you are you insinuating that at Urian's age, uh, he can't get nailed in a wood shop? <laughs> Luckily, I'm a nurse. I know how to treat that burn. <laughs> And the Peter problems. Uh, <laughs> that too. <laughs> I am saving this for when Lamar comes back. It's all right. This is just, this is Lamar's bullet right here. <laughs> 50 calibers of death. Well, it's actually a bottle opener. It's a bottle right? opener. <laughs> it's still awesome. 
I yep. got him that one year. <laughs> it sets here and here because uh, we I use it to open all my liquor when we play Blood on the Clock Tower because it seems appropriate to have a 50 caliber <laughs> bullet for bottle opening. I'm glad your ribs hurt, Miser Mark, because that's what we do here. We laugh at all the craziness. <laughs> we need a, we need to laugh at the Q and A because uh, while we have humorous moments during the season. Most of the time, it's not a laughing situation these kindred are in, and they're laughing at the time just because they're trying to cope. And this is why it's rated M. Because we are all adultish here. <laughs> you know, the look, the look on, in, on uh, mischievous Red's face when Amelia tells her she's going to kill her and uh, Nicholas is going to have watch her die in his arms just because it reminds her of his sister. Uh, yeah, it's dark. We need the laughs outside of the season because... Red was like, ooh, damn, <sighs> damn. That was, yeah, that was rough. That was rough. I was like, ooh, that was cold. <laughs> uh, but it was a good scene. I love the way she played it. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't see any more questions. So I guess we're going to call it. Yep. Now uh, you'll get the rest of your evening. It's, uh, we're over the two hour mark. Yep. Uh, so, you know, next week. Is going to be a night with your boy Twitch. We're going to do the season seven summary from your boy Twitch. I know he hasn't been around as much lately. In game, it's because he's doing Alistair work out of game. Uh, it's been, you know, it's tough for me to get it recorded because it's a separate recording. It's not done on recording night. I have to do a whole separate thing for it. And my free time has been tough lately. So I season seven, I really didn't have time to do any your boy Twitch parts. That's why you didn't see him in that. Uh, the week after, it's a holiday weekend. It is Labor Day weekend. We know a lot of not, not a lot of people are going to be going around. We're going to be doing a special all day stream though. It's going to be uh, I'm going to rebroadcast all of the season summaries in order, from season one to all season the way to seven. season seven. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to start probably around 10 a.m. on that Sunday. Watch if you want to watch the season summaries. Turn it on in the background while you're doing your ba your backyards. Pop into chat, say hi once in a while, or don't. It's up to you. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to be, that's the last big holiday of the summer. So uh, we're just going to have the, the season summaries on a rerun so that we still have our content and people who are behind can leave it on in the background to catch pieces of all the summaries. But otherwise, uh, people can enjoy their weekend, their yeah. holiday before we return. So. Yeah, because we are returning with season eight. On the 11th. the 11th of September at 5 p.m. Eastern. Mm -hmm. But yeah, join your boy Twitch next Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern for the season seven summary. And then if you are behind or you might have missed some things. Amongst, or you want a refresher. Or you want a refresher. Join us on the 4th of September for an all-day stream starting at 10 a.m. Eastern. Of the season summaries from season one all the way through season seven. It is going to be about 11 plus hours of content running that day. So you guys can join in and as you can and check out stuff that you might have missed. Pop in, pop out. Do yep. your thing. Do your thing. Um, and then, like I said, on the 11th, we are back here. And for those that are caught up on the story, uh, the season summaries are good, though, because your boy Twitch is prone to reveal spoilers about what's coming ahead. He he always sneaks in a little bit of spoiler here and there and about some events that uh, are coming for the Coterie. So uh, just because you're caught up don't mean the season summaries aren't good because you find out some sneaky shit. <clears throat> I want to know what the fuck he's been doing to Joe. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as this is the last time you are officially at the table right now, at yeah. least for the time being, Gavin, we're going to miss you. Yeah, we are. It has been a pleasure. You're an integral part of the goatery. Yep. It has been a pleasure <laughs> to be your storyteller. It has been a pleasure to be a player with you at the table. And it has been a pleasure to tell a story with you. Yeah. Thank you all. I appreciate it so much. And I've, I've had so much fun with this group, with this game. And... I'm just glad. I'm glad I was able to be a part of things and really just enjoy everything that uh, was put out there. And I love each and every one of you guys. You guys helped me really 
breathe life into Lamar. And I, don't, I mean, I'm, I, if I was in any way helpful towards your stories and let you do the things you want to do with your characters, then I feel like I succeeded where I want to succeed. So thank all of you. And I, this is not goodbye. Just see you later for now. And, uh, and we're going to end that here, I guess. Uh, yeah. So tough. coming up over the next week, we do not have any streams during the week because Dune ended a session early. So join us Saturday as Tiss returns before she takes the month of September off with Call of Cthulhu at 3 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. It is London Esoteric Society set in Victorian London. Join her group of investigators. They are legit sus. It, it, it y'all, y'all. It, it, it's it's campy. It's fun. It's crazy. It's intense. Um, it is literally, yeah. They're wanting to summon elder things. They're reading all the books that should be burned. They're losing their sanity. They're burning through their luck. It is really a fun romp. So you want to join that Saturday at three p.m. Eastern, and then of course, like I said, join Shanky here for a night with your boy Twitch. Season seven. That'll be live as well. That'll be live yep. at 5 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. Because your boy Twitch will an answers questions from chat in character, though. Mm -hmm. So he only answers questions in character. So if you ask him something, it's he's going to answer it as your boy Twitch, which is interesting. Who is now an Alistair. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and as the rest of this, of course, pop over to Discord, pop over to YouTube. You know all that stuff. You've heard me say it. Get the merch. Check out our friends. Uh, we've got the friends, you know, let's, we're going through it real quick here at the end. Oh, I didn't even type it right. Uh, if you want to support the players, bits, donations, they go to the players, not to the studio. If you want to support the studio, subscribe on Twitch, get the coffee, all the, all the normal good shit. We're, we're going to zoom through that. Uh, so, you know, mental health, everybody, it's very important to us here at McStabber Studios. We take mental health very seriously. Please, uh, check in, reach out to those around you, talk to those you haven't heard from, from, for a while and make sure they're okay. Uh, be that lifeline that people need. And if you suffer from mental health issues, like most people do in chat, list the numbers you can call or text 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because uh, mental health is health. And uh, there's nothing wrong with admitting you need help. We all need help once in a while. We can't do it alone. None of us can. Uh, we need that. We need those coteries in our lives to get through night to night, day to day. So uh, please take that mental health seriously. And uh, any closing comments by my wife? She's free to do hers. Yep. I want to also remind you, you can get your Lamar merch at our merch store. I just posted the link. You can get Lamar merch. There is also a shirt that you have to be signed in to see because you have to be above the age of 18 to see it. It is <laughs> Camp Wish a Motherfucker Would. And on the back, it says Camp Counselor. <laughs> It is a badass shirt, y'all. So really, go check out the merch. Um, there will be a little tweaking to, well, you know what? There might be tweaking to merch. There might not, because this coterie really does see Lamar is still part of it, even if he isn't here at the table. So we might keep the merch the same for now. The The poster may not lose his image in it, Yeah, his icon, because... Because they still consider him a member of the coterie. They're just waiting for him to come back. Yep. So, yep. Gone, uh, but not forgotten. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. But I'm on McStabber, nicest mean nurse you're ever going to meet. Timber Brad here is also a nurse. He is the meanest nice nurse you're ever going to meet. And we're going to tell you. Please get your goddamn shots. Yes, that is the COVID shot, the COVID booster, the um, uh, monkeypox shot when it becomes available for you. Uh, make sure your polio vaccine is up to date. Um, yes, get your shots. Get your shots. Um, also, I'm going to say abort the fucking court. Abort the GOP. Vote blue down the ticket in November. Um, yeah, it is definitely... Um, <clears throat> Yeah. Vote like um, your rights and the rights of people you love are on the line because they are. So thank you. Um, also, fuck Putin, fuck fascists, fuck racist, fuck misogynist, fuck everybody that's a goddamn worthless piece of trash that takes our fucking air. Yeah. And don't be Satine Phoenix or Jameson Stone. I'm not done harping on them just because <laughs> the shit that came out still pisses me off. 
So uh, don't be like them. Please be Mr. Rogers. We need more Mr. Rogers and Bob Rosses in the world. Uh, love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. Get some happy clouds, some fluffy clouds. Get some happy trees. Get some happy trees. And that nice little polite bush over there. That was always yeah. good too. Yeah. And your window is part of that too. Yeah, Absolutely. I Absolutely. So uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you. And uh, we're going to miss you, Gavin. We, we, we love you. So we love you. good night, everybody. <laughs>